Hey you guys, what is going on? We have new engine code jet tags available right now over at roadsuntraveled.com slash shop. The link is in the description. That's right, we made it back down south. That FD on the left? I'll save you guys the uncertainty and anxiety by telling you right now, this RX-7 most definitely has an LS engine under the hood. Trust me though, you're going to love what the owner David has fabricated this thing to sound like. David drives on the Pro-Am Formula Drift Circuit and you can catch him at any number of events across the US next season. All right, David, basically, I'm uh, I'm saying my final prayers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I appreciate you yeah. for this opportunity. Definitely. So what we'll do is uh, get you in it. First get then, me in the car. Yeah, and then we'll see if we can have some fun. There you go. Set up great. Belts over the top. This is a completely fixed seat, uh, and David, I'm already a little dirty here, that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> David's a little bigger than me, so I'm basically gonna have to slouch down. I apologize for me uh, royally screwing up your seatbelts here. Oh, no worries about it. Seatbelt adjustments. They're meant to adjust. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not gonna tell you the location of this chute, because uh, <laughs> this car's not street legal. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, they don't have to know. No, they don't have to know. <laughs> totally street legal. That's how you do it. I'm guessing this is sweat on here. Uh, a little bit. It's actually a little bit of brake fluid. I had to uh, oh, okay. leave yeah. the yeah, brake yeah, yeah. system there, so that's why some uh, some of it got onto where it shouldn't have, and that's why. Okay, so you guys, if this isn't the most insane thing uh, I've ever done on a public road, Aside from drive way too fast in very high horsepower cars, uh, this is gonna be it. So, Oof. rip royal. Probably, but I'm not gonna be doing any of that today. <laughs> that, that's like a dream. I'll work up to that. Yeah, there we <laughs> One go. One day, ripping it. A few practice sessions, and wow. we'll be doing no problem. Dog box as well. Straight cut gears, no synchros. Uh, this, this is a, it's a full-on race car. Let's fire it up. Sex, blood, and then rock and roll. Yeah, clutch in. I said we're in neutral. Oh, so I wasn't neutral? Right there's neutral, yeah. Perfect, okay. And then, like I said, sex, blood, rock and roll. That's the sex. That's the blood. Things 
This is the most, the most car out of any car I've ever driven. Like this is as close as you can possibly get to like. As being in tune with just mechanical oh. parts and engine and transmission, it is, I mean, you hear everything, you feel everything. <laughs> yeah, I, this is what, like half the reason I do this show is for the adrenaline rush. Yeah. That's like the biggest rush. Of, oh my God. <laughs> oh man, okay. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So are you ready to go? Heck yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's oh, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I've changed career goals. <laughs> career goals. <laughs> career goals have changed. I'm going to become a drift driver. Right. <laughs> it was a little sloppy, but I, I did yeah, it. I you mean, did, man. <laughs> I mean, shoot. You went right at it and then went ahead and went for it. Oof. Thank you, David. <laughs> You're very welcome. That. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. You guys, go check out David on Instagram. When are you driving next? Uh, next time that I might be running is I might be running next weekend at Lanier, but if not after that, then probably it'll be in about a month or two here at Lanier Speedway. Here okay. In Georgia. Awesome. You guys, come down to Georgia. The car culture here is <laughs> it's next level. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. Thanks again, David. Oh, no, my pleasure. I appreciate it. Check David out on Instagram. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and hope you guys enjoy the rest of all this southern U.S. Uh, content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Count wins when they got it on record, off record. I let them take advantage. I was wildin' on record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote on record, off record. I still want the act, not the ghost. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable.
Yeah, so. basically what we have back here is it's a complete standalone fuel system. It's a dual pump system with a swirl pot to keep, you know, obviously when you're drifting or even whenever you're road racing, you know, the G-forces are constantly throwing any fluids around. So what it has is it's got actually its own contained swirl pot and designated fuel pump to always keep fuel in it no matter what G-force you go through. So that way you don't starve the motor. Next, you can always see the coolant lines here. Um, the radiator is actually in the back. It's in the trunk. Uh, oh yeah, I see it up there. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, and that's actually to keep it out of harm's way. In the front of a drift car, you're kind of actually the front's always in peril because that's where you're gonna be close to other cars, close to walls, close to cones, and everything. Right. So it kind of takes some of the worry and the chance that it might get damaged by putting it in the back. Also picks up cooling. You pick up about an extra gallon of coolant by just all the lines and stuff. Okay. Running. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of just it's all around beneficial, other than the fact that it takes a lot to do to a lot of fabrication work, a lot of time to put it in the back. Mm -hmm. How do you act, how do you get airflow? Is there any specific things or strategies you do to get airflow back there? Yeah, that's actually the biggest uh, kind of hurdle that you see whenever you put the radiator in the back. You actually have to do a Lexan rear glass and find some way to cut it to duct air to get into it. What's luckily about drift cars is we're not going straight, we're going sideways so that the air has a more chance to kind of hit like a ducting scoop mm -hmm. that you fabricate to get the air to go into the back. And also the natural aerodynamics of air going over a vehicle wants to follow the rear windshield down. So that way the air is directed right into the radiator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not something I'd ever thought about because if you look at a traditional aerodynamic setup like on a supercar or something, it's mm -hmm. gonna be totally different than like you said, a car that's built to go sideways. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Um, so as far as suspension goes, uh, what is, I mean obviously this is drastically different <laughs> than what a factory uh, FD would look like. What are kind of the biggest modifications that you need? The biggest modifications that you really need is a good, just as far as a good coilover setup. Mm -hmm. um, also a good uh, camber control arm setup, that way you can increase the uh, wear life of your tires and get the best grip that you can get out of these. A lot of people think with a drift car, you don't want a lot of grip. It's actually the opposite. You want a lot of grips because you're flirting with disaster mm -hmm. every second of it. So when you need to let off and you need it to grip up, you've got to have that grip in there so that you can. Uh, the upper control arms are actually a custom piece that I made and designed. It's uh, just made out of some DOM steel and they have adjustability himes here. So you can actually push the camber out because these things have a bad uh, time with gaining camber as they squat. Okay. And also we have a set of field coilovers on it. Odie Bakchis and his company custom valve those and designed them for my setup and was able to supply us with a set of those and they work absolutely amazing. You definitely need a good coilover setup for mm -hmm. drifting. Obviously yeah. there are no, uh, <laughs> no regulations as far as like <laughs> Exhaust, catalytic. Do you have any like noise restrictions or tracks you go to with noise restrictions? Very few. There okay. aren't. Um, typically, when a drift event is set up by the organizers, they know it's going to be loud. So they'll typically have it on a day to make sure that we can actually have, you know, free range of decibel limits so that there's no way that we can get in trouble for it. There's one track around that does have it, but that's just because the city, and there's one day we can drift there, and that's 4th of July. Oh, and nice. Yeah, nice. which is cool. That's so cool. they invite us out to come out there. They kind of handpick a few of us, come out there, and we get to put on kind of, of a 4th of July show for them, and as well as viewing the fireworks, they get to watch some drifting and just have some fun. So yeah. Yeah, as you can see, there's no mufflers, no catalytics, no uh, resignators, straight pipe, um, just loud, proud, and you know, make your presence known on track. So, yeah. uh, kind of like my pride setup is this is a custom set of headers that uh, I built and designed. They're um, they're equal length inch seven eighths mm -hmm. headers that I wanted to merge them to collector. I wanted to get kind of an exotic sound because it has a V eight in it, mm -hmm. and you know, typically you're just used to that Chevy V eight sound. I wanted to try and give it a unique sound. And I put a lot of time into designing this, and it came out pretty well, I think. It definitely has a uh, notos uh, notable different sound to it than your typical V8. Mm -hmm. um, next is it's got a, uh, it's a full dry sump setup, oiling, yep. like I mentioned before, with fluids being sloshed around by G-forces. you got to have a good oiling setup on a Chevy LS. And I went ahead and built my own dry sump setup, ran a Morozo pan, kind of pieced together a kit. And um, 
It's got it like kind of allowed me to fit this motor in, fit it really low with the oil pan being slim. And um, it was definitely made it a lot easier to fit in and kind of perform better with a lower center of gravity. So as far as the LS uh, engine goes, um, what was it pulled out of and what did you have to do specifically as far as mounting the engine just generally in the car and then specific for a drift setup? Is there anything different you have to do? Uh, somewhat, kind of. What's actually funny is that we actually have to kind of follow some rules on that. There are rule books oh, to okay. it. We can't modify the cars just how we see fit because then, you know, if you have an unlimited budget and you can build the best thing or the best that can never be beaten by yeah. someone, you know, less fortunate than you. Um, so what I had to do is I actually had to re retain factor dimensions of the subframe. The engine is mm. out of a 2001 Corvette, just your regular 5.7 aluminum block, mm -hmm. Chevy V8. And so with retaining the factory dimensions of the subframe, I had to kind of get creative with how I could mount it. So what I did is I fabricated these solid motor mounts and took a base plate, mated the base plate to the subframe, and then built my motor mounts off of that, keeping in mind that I would have to keep room for all the accessories, for the exhaust, for the drive sump, with putting that big engine in the smaller chassis. And as far as weight goes, I mean, being an aluminum block, it's, uh, you're still gonna retain, I mean, the FD is known kind of for the 50-50 weight distribution. Exactly. And I would assume that it's very close to, if not 50-50 uh, weight distribution. Yeah, it's, it is very, it's very close. That was another thing with helping putting the radiator in the back. Helps offset that weight. Mm -hmm. And the last time that I balanced it, it was 49.7. No the, way. Yeah, it oh, was perfect. almost, yeah, it was yeah. almost perfect 50-50. So, mm -hmm. It, like I said, the only, the big difference with the, versus the V8 over rotary is it's taller weight. It's not that there's more, it's actually taller, mm -hmm. which is kind of something I've noticed a little bit different okay. in the chassis. And that's kind of a unique thing for people considering doing V8 swaps in it. Your weight is actually just a little bit taller, kind of like throwing around a taller stick or trying to balance a broom on your hand. Right. So, <laughs> yes. Um, are but, you are you a rotary fan? Oh, I'm a huge rotary fan. Okay. Unfortunately, rotaries are not a huge me fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I don't think they like anybody, to be honest. <laughs> they definitely, I heard that they definitely pick and choose their owners. Right, um, right. I gave it a good, strong five years, blowing Oh wow. Blowing one up probably eight out of the ten times I would drive it. Mm -hmm. And, but, I mean, when they are, when they rip, they rip. It makes... It's so much power to weight, and it's they are just a blast to drive. It's just as soon as the boost hits, it's like a rocket ship and just takes off. Mm -hmm. um, versus this, I actually kind of built this as around similar, just higher horsepower, trying to keep the torque a little bit lower, but I want it to rev to the moon. And it actually kind of uh, kind of behaves a little similar. You got to clutch, kick it, keep your foot heavy in the throttle to keep it keep the uh, power band right up into the range where it needs to be to make its uh, best power and be efficient. Mm -hmm. Are there any power uh, specific restrictions in the class that you're driving in? None whatsoever. No. Limit, okay. The moon's the limit. Wow. <laughs> so what, what, how much power is this making roughly This right thing now? makes roughly about 500 horsepower NA yeah. and no big power adders. Like I said, it's got a cam in it, has an exhaust. It's got the unique intake, which you'll see in a second. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, no porting, no polishing. Wow, okay. Yeah, and it makes it like right at 500 of the wheels. So reliable. Has it very, been very, very reliable? reliable. Cool. Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, now, honestly, probably, I mean, I don't drift personally. Uh, I would love to someday. But <laughs> um, the biggest thing in terms of drifting is like, angle kits, camber, and getting the getting the steering is, am I correct in saying You're that very, the front suspension and alignment is like the most important? Very correct, especially when it comes to a co uh, competition standpoint. Mm. When you start elevating just from your normal, you know, have fun track days and you start competing, steering is your biggest thing that can make or break it for you. And with the constant evolving of the sport of drifting, you need to be constantly evolving your driving and trying to get better. And with that comes better steering kits, better um, better brake setups, also better tire setups and everything. So what I've actually done here is I've created my own kind of steering setup here to mm -hmm. compete. Back when I started building this car, there really wasn't anything for FD's RX-7s as far as a drifting wise goes. Everybody road raced them or they just wanted to track them, street them. So I kind of had to get creative and uh, did a lot of R&D and I put together this setup here. Um, you can see that it actually has a much farther turning oh. 
<laughs> turning radius than a factory setup would. That's ridiculous. That's mm -hmm. like as close to 90 degrees as you can it get. It is. It's, we measured it. Wow. It's about uh, it's about 70 plus degrees, depending on what spacer and offset we run with the wheels. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of, with different tracks and uh, different layouts, we play with running a little bit of a spacer or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that way we can kind of, you can control the swing and sweep of the steering, which is another big thing. There's so much design and just geometry that goes into it that it's just it's hard to wrap your brain around <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah and then yeah i guess you, like you were saying before about moving the radiator mm -hmm. there's an insane amount of space here so i mean if you if you do get tapped and stuff there's no real vital organs so to speak that are kind of directly in exactly in way. that's the big thing too is you have to like especially when you start you know running in competition as far as drifting goes you've got to think that you, it's not going to be if you crash, it's going to be when or mm -hmm. what's going to happen to my vehicle when that does happen. So that's why I moved the radiator to the back and you can see there's about almost two foot of room here so it can take a heavy impact and then keep on going. That's saying keep a licking and keep on ticking so that's exactly what you need to do. It's got a, like I said, you see the pump here with the dry sump set up, have the oil filter relocated so it's up and moved back out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, that's like I said, it's basically you just got to kind of think of safety when it comes to it and making it as efficient as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with the inner tie rod, it's been modified a little bit and you can see uh, basically I had to lengthen it and then I boxed it so that it could make up for the extended track width that the control arms offer. Um, that allows you in turn to run that massive steering angle and clears the wheels from the frame, clears them from the other move, uh, components. And that's what, that's actually, it's a factory FD modded tie rod. So Mazda did, so, did something right. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the, the strongest ones that I've, I mean, yeah. compared to some of like the, you know, the popular uh, drift chassis of 240s, I see those things bend all the time. I've tapped walls, tapped people, and <laughs> they actually, they're very robust. They, uh, uh, kudos to them for making some good parts. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, mm -hmm. I appreciate your time, David. Awesome. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for showing me the car. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be around the Atlanta area again. That's 100%. Well, awesome. Hit us up when you come into town. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thanks, guys.